Hey guys, Alana here. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Today we're giving you a sneak peek into a new resource we just put out. So we have an online prayer retreat called Praying in the New Year that you can access at prayingchristianwomen.com slash new year. And what this is going to give you is a series of short about five minute videos you can do them over the course of several days you can sit out you know an hour or two on a quiet weekend to go through this it's just a great time to settle down focus on the lord don't worry if you're listening to today's episode and it's not the new year this is something you could do year round it's start of a homeschool year start of a new school year Really, any time that you feel you just need to slow down, connect with the Lord, we're going to spend some time reflecting on things in the past and giving praises to Him for that, and then praying for things to come. So again, it's Praying in the New Year at prayingchristianwomen.com slash new year. And for today's episode on the podcast, we're just going to play for you one of the videos so you can get a feel for the kind of content that's in there. So hopefully it will be a blessing and encouragement to you while you're listening to it on this feed. And then I would love to have you join the actual course to get more encouragement and focused prayer prompts to pray in the new year or to just reconnect with the Lord whatever time of year it is. So here is one of the videos that you'll get when you sign up for the Praying in the New Year online prayer retreat. Hope you like it. I am so excited about this next topic, and we have mentioned it a little bit already, but I am excited to just dive into it, and that is praying with imagination. And so I want to just give a couple disclaimers first. I'm not talking about magic. I'm not saying, okay, anything you can picture, you can just picture it and God's going to make it happen. God is so much more powerful, sovereign, relational than this genie in a bottle. So we are not conjuring up answers to our prayer at all. But what we are doing, we're engaging all our senses when we pray. We're connecting to that part of our heart, to that kind of deep rooted part that's not just all up here in our brain and our logic. We're engaging with that deep seated part where our passions truly do come from. So Let's go ahead and give this a try, all right? So I'm just gonna ask a few questions and I want you to picture, visualize, or imagine, if you will, your answers to this. Again, you can pause if that's easier. I would recommend it if you've got the time. Pause to, to give your, your mind and your spirit ample time to really picture your answers here. What would your daily look like if? That's what we're gonna start with. And so again, we talked about wishful praying, and in my mind, imaginative praying is wishful praying to the next level. Wishful praying that we just did is kind of like, oh, wouldn't that be neat? Here, God, let me tell you what I think would be kind of cool. Again, we're not ordering God around. We're not guaranteeing that he's going to make life simple and easy for us just because we want it, but it's just this habit of engaging, engaging God with our our wishes that come to mind. Now we're not just going to wishes, we're going to these deep-seated passions and desires. So what would your daily like look like if you were more joyful? I want you to actually picture that. Picture you being twice as joyful as you are on your best day and picture the details of what that would look like. How would it feel when you wake up in the morning? How would it feel when you get out of bed? What would you do when you get out of bed? How would your relationships look different? And not just look different, how would they feel different? Remember, we're engaging with all of our senses right now. We're not just relying on our logic. We're relying on this deep-seated partner soul. What would your life look like if you were 10 times more joyful than you are on your happiest days? Picture that. If you want to write it out, write it out. Just start with, okay, I'm joyful. This is what my day would look like. Here's another one. What would your daily life look like if you never gave into fear? Now, if you're like me, even that question makes you feel a little scared. <laughs> like it does for me. I see it here and I'm the one who wrote it, but it, I get this like squeezing in the gut kind of feeling, well, if I never gave into fear, what in the world is God going to ask me to do? Don't worry about that side of things. This is, we're safe right now. 
we're just imagining. I'm not saying that tomorrow everything you imagine is going to happen, but what would it look like if you never gave into fear? If the second God put a passion or a calling or a desire into your heart, you were able to say, yes, sir, I am so excited about that. If you could stop fearing about making other people upset, fearing about what other people think of you, fearing about the future, imagine the freedom that you would feel and really get to where you're kind of feeling it already. Practice feeling that way, if you will. Because again, we are engaging all of our senses right now. We're not just praying with our minds. We're praying with really with our emotion and our soul right now. What would it look like if you did not give in to fear at all? What would change? And again, don't focus on, oh, well, if I never gave in to fear. Here's where my mind goes. When I first see this question, my mind goes into, oh, God's going to ask me to do all these scary things and life is going to be scary. But what I'm forgetting is, wait, I'm not giving in to fear. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. How do you... How do you present yourself? How do you go into your areas of ministry, your spheres of influence? If you have no fear at all, because you are so confident that God is with you. Another thing, if there's like a particular scenario that you get scared of, you know, maybe it's something happening to your kids, or maybe it's a health scare. If you can picture yourself going into that scenario with perfect courage, that can really grow and inspire your faith. What would your daily life look like? Daily life look like if every single day you put on the armor of God, you did this deliberately, you turn yourself into a warrior for the kingdom of God. All right. If you don't know the armor of God, it's in Ephesians. It talks about the sword of the spirit, the sandals of peace, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, um, is the belt of truth. I think it is. I don't have them written out right now. Something of truth. I think it's the belt. What would that look like if every single day you put on the armor of God and you were aware as you went through whatever trials you were going through that day, you were aware that the armor of God was fully surrounding you, okay? Just picture what would that look like? Imagine the confidence you would feel. What would your daily life look like if you were constantly aware of God's presence? All right, this takes us all the way back to the very beginning of our prayer time where we talked about um, being more joyful, right? And being more aware. What would that look like? So we kind of touched on it earlier. Now we're really diving deep into what would that feel like if every single moment you were aware of God's presence. Now I'm not saying that if you're not aware of God's presence to that degree every moment that you're doing something wrong, right? We all have day-to-day -day life to handle, but this conscious practice of picturing what that would look like, this is like... Um, it's almost like a subconscious prayer, you know, because this is different than saying, God, please help me to be aware of your presence. Amen. Right? That's a good prayer to pray. I would absolutely say, yeah, that's a great prayer to pray. But this is such, um, it's on such a more emotional, guttural level that we're really imagining what would that be like to be aware of God's presence all the time. And then we're doing just like what we did in the wishful praying. We're lifting that picture up to God right? He is aware of these desires. And he. so even though we're not starting with dear God and ending with amen, what we're doing right now, imagining these things, this is a form of prayer, right? Here's another one that's so exciting for me to think about. And this will probably be the last one we go to because this is just so inspiring for me. What would your daily life look like if your prayer life doubled its impact? Okay, so I'm not talking about if you go from 20 minutes to praying to 40 minutes to praying, right? That's fine and good. That's not what I'm talking about, though. I'm talking about doubling its impact, not only in terms of answered prayers, but in terms of your connection to God, in terms of your passion, in terms of your worship. Your prayer life has just doubled its impact. What does that feel like? Imagine if you were always excited to pray, if you always felt absolute 110% conviction that your prayers were truly making a difference, right? Imagine what that would look like. Take some time just in that picture, okay, and use that to just encourage yourself to become more like that person. But again, we're not, we're not focusing on the up here. We're not saying, dear God, please help me to get better at praying. We're really picturing, imagining what's your life look like? 
when you're at that point. We're allowing those desires, those deep-seated desires that we have to be better at praying. We're allowing ourselves to experience that fully. What does that look like? And then we're turning that into our prayer. So I hope this has given you an example of some of the things you can do with imaginative praying. I want to go back and just remind all of us we're not talking magic here we're not conjuring things up we're basically just tapping into some of these deep-seated desires that we already have you know who doesn't want to be less fearful who doesn't want to be more joyful who doesn't want a prayer life with a deeper impact but instead of just kind of listing out what we want or what we think we should do better we're really allowing ourselves to feel the emotional weight and the intensity of these things. And then we're taking these passions and desires, lifting them up to God in prayer. And so that is uh, just an example of how to pray imaginatively. So I hope that that was an encouraging video for you. I hope you got some good both knowledge as well as spiritual inspiration from that. I hope that it really blesses your prayer life. These are the kinds of videos you'll find if you go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash new year and sign up to join our Praying in the New Year online prayer retreat, which can be done any time of the year and can also be done in one sitting or over the course of several days or weeks. It's whatever works best with your schedule. And we will see you next time on the podcast. Have a great day.